God is saying it's time for us to let that baggage go. What is happening? Jesus is speaking. John 1, 5 says the light pierces the darkness and the darkness shall never overcome. What's the darkness? The hurt and pain. The trauma that's on the inside of us. But he's illuminating it. And he's speaking to this person. Now don't look at that person and say, that's a guy I don't know. Look at that person and see you in him. Because this is you. And God's illuminating. He wants to show you what the enemy has done in your life. But what's the man doing? He's walking away. So this right here represents you. Again, this is you. What is that? That's the enemy. And he's working on your mind. The battlefield is in our mind. The thoughts that the enemy puts into our mind. The, uh, the enemy uses people to come against us. People that we love. But they hurt us. But it's always a game in our mind. And a lot of times the thoughts in your mind you think are your own thoughts or not. They're thoughts the enemy has planted. Next, please. So here's the darkness. Red also rep represents warfare. There's spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6 says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But we wrestle against, and it gives all of these, um, these things. It's about the fallen angels that we, we wrestle against. So it's a hooded, a cloaked figure. But he's not alone. This represents us, that we cannot understand. We can't see clearly what the enemy is doing. But there's a hunchback on it. It's because the enemy is always there trying to bring us down and to destroy us. Uh oh, angry man. Red represents love, but it also represents the opposite, which is hatred. He's, does he, he don't look happy, right? He's angry. This is the accuser of the brethren screaming and yelling, always making you feel ashamed, making you feel um, unloved and unwanted, like you're a failure. The next one. And this is the state we're in. So this is a lady this time instead of the blue man. Again, don't look at it as a lady. Look at it. This is you. Look at her. She's got her face. Her hair's covering her face because she's ashamed. She is sad. Blue, emotional lows. This is what the enemy wants to do to us. To steal our joy. To take away the life that God has. Next, please. Again, this is, it looks like the same guy, right? But we have a choice to make. When the enemy comes against us and we have rejection from the people. The people that should love us the most. The people should protect us and help us. And instead, the ones we love the most are the ones that bring the most pain. We have a choice to make. But most often we don't make the right choices because we're so young we don't understand about spiritual warfare and principles at that point. So what do we do? We want to protect ourselves. We don't want that hurt and pain. So sometimes you go and you become this angry man. The same angry man, the accuser of the brother, you become them. And you're mean. Have you ever not seen someone you don't like? You don't want to be around. They're just mean and nasty and they turn everybody off. That could be you. Is that you? That was me as, as a child. I was that mean, angry person because nobody was going to get close enough to me to hurt me ever again. My personality changed to protect me. Next. Some people become this person. They're the introverts. They don't want to be around anybody. They stay home. They read their books all the time. They want to prevent themselves from being hurt again and rejected again. And so they withdraw in within themselves and they don't want to be around anybody. So whether it's you withdraw and you become social, social, well, socially isolated or you become that mean angry person that runs everybody off, that's how what the enemy does is we change our personality to protect ourselves. Most people are within that spectrum. But as soon as I'm talking about this, you're probably thinking, oh, that was me. Oh, that was a family member. Oh, I know. Because that's what the enemy does. Next. So this is a new picture. That's that mean, angry accuser of the brethren. He is fired up angry, right? Why do you think he is? Look at all of this. The anger. The, uh, the orange also represents spiritual warfare. Here's the issue. God has shined his light. He's pierced the darkness. And this time, instead of the blue man with his wet butt baggage, luggage, walking away from Jesus, he's decided he's going to die to himself. This is the blue man. 
that the enemy is raising up trying to destroy. Have you ever seen someone who's dead and they cross their arms? And they're laying out in display, right? The, dead, the blue man has decided, I'm not going to walk away from Jesus anymore. I'm dying to myself. I'm not going to let my mind, will, and emotions control me anymore because I want him. I want him. So even though there's pain involved, even though I'm having to bring up memories I don't want to think about anymore, I'm willing to do it because I know that Jesus' promises are yes and amen. He is faithful to perform his promise. So there's a battle raging over the soul and the life of every single one of us here. But this is what Jesus does. He comes along. Do you see the compassion in his eyes? He's speaking tenderly to us. Even though we're going through the worst pain, the worst trauma in our lives repeatedly over and over. Because it just what one thing that happened to us. It's repeatedly the enemy wants to bring everything when your problems in your home, problems when you're a child. I hated school. I hated being in school because of how the kids, they were mean and they picked on me. Then when you, you, you become a teenager, oh yeah, we all know what we're doing as a teenager, right? Just more and more issues, little by little, factors later in life when you have your job, when you have uh, problems within your family. But Jesus comes along. He's full of love. He's full of compassion. And then the next one, Do you see the hand? This was actual a, a pencil sketch that the young man had given me, and I sent that to my niece, and I had her paint this because it was it was not painted. Do you see the hand of God? Jesus, He's taken up His sword. He has pierced the darkness, and He has destroyed. Do you remember that thing on top of the person's head? He's pierced the darkness. He has destroyed and killed the enemy. And it was all because that person decided, I am choosing to humble myself and turn to God and allow God to work in me. He's saying, I'm not going to let bitterness and anger and unforgiveness and hatred rule my life anymore. One of the, the most common sins that we carry around is a sin of offense because somebody has hurt us so much they deserve punishment I'm not ever going to forgive them because of what they did I, it's okay I can be angry I can be bitter I'm, I'm justified but Jesus says no we're supposed to forgive our enemies right how many times do we forgive our enemies Peter as he said um, once, twice, is it 40? <coughs> it equals, yeah. 70 times 7, it equals 490. And who watches the chosen? This was just on the other day on the one, and it said 490. What does that equal? That means completion, perfection, until it's over. Because hurt and pain and trauma and rejection. When you allow it to continue and fester into unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, and hatred, we can't live our life to the fullest. And I want everyone in here to understand that Jesus Christ has given every single one of us a, a decision. It's a choice that we have to make. We either choose God or we reject him just like that first picture. Forgiveness does not mean that, hey, forget it. What you did that hurt me, don't worry about it. Forgiveness means I don't want to hold anything negative, no darkness in me that's going to separate me from the Lord. So forgiveness, Jesus, I trust you. If he or she needs judgment, I trust you to bring judgment. Amen. But if he or she needs your mercy and grace just like I do because I don't understand the full picture, then I trust you to do that. Forgiveness means you truly trust Jesus to take care of your situation. And just like it, it says in the word, if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, what's he going to do? Since he's going to hear and he's going to begin to heal and restore. And God is saying he is ready to heal and restore every single person that is willing to receive it. All right, everybody, let's stand up.